everybody welcome back to fit dad uk uh sorry it's been a little bit of a while i've been busy doing stuff uh, in the garden so i'd like to be doing videos a little bit more regularly but sometimes it's not always that easy i've been doing some 5k training which is through my sort of garmin watch and i've got uh, an app and there's a um, you can choose coaches on there and i've chose uh, jeff galloway so yeah, big shout out to jeff galloway so he's set me a regime around trying to increase my, my time for 5Ks, which is actually really useful for football as well. It's a good distance for football and the way he's using the training, it, it does lots of run, walk, run sort of stuff, which is really suitable for football sort of type training as well. So it did really help. I returned to playing this Thursday, just gone after lifting of lockdown restrictions. I could tell the difference. I felt, felt really good for it. So yeah, I'm gonna do another video about that at a later date, obviously just looking into that training regime and sort of rating that and looking into that in a bit more depth. So this video today is gonna to be about me building a, a playhouse for my daughter. So to do that, so the objective is obviously to have this playhouse built, but to do that, I needed somewhere to put, that, put the playhouse. So I've got a patio out the back of my house and I've also got an area just to the side of that, which was basically a load of bushes on some sloped ground so the idea and the objective was to obviously get those bushes out, build and ex extend the retaining wall across, and obviously backfill that, get all the get all the ground levelled, get some MOT stone in, and then get a concrete base in. So I've got somewhere to obviously put this playhouse. So ultimately, I'm aiming to when she grows out of this playhouse and we and we move on and get rid of that, and then ultimately I might be putting something a little bit bigger on there. So I've made sure that it's suitable for that. So I want to put some sort of summer house on there as well. That's the idea and that's the reason why, obviously, a little bit of overkill with the sort of size of the uh, of the concrete slab and the, probably the thickness as well. But yeah, we'll go into a little bit more detail with it and it's going to be in two parts. This is going to take, the first part is going to take us to the point where I'm up to now, which is the concrete base is done. And then part two will be obviously assembling, building the playhouse and just making good the uh, paving around the playhouse and sort of finishing everything off. So yeah, this is part one. Hope you enjoy. Turn. So I'm going to have a wall starter on there just to tie that wall in and then these are about 400 to 450 wide and I've got a little return there just to put a foot in it give it a bit more stability and I've done exactly the same thing on the end here just do another, another return just to give it more stability there so I'm going to pour the concrete up to the level of the garden so you're probably looking at about Probably six inches, you don't need to put six inches, you only need about four, I've been told, but it'll save me on blocks. Instead of using seven courses, I can use six courses of block there. And I'm paying for a cubic meter anyway to come get to borrow it in, so I'll get it up to, up to that level so I can do six courses. You might want to continue the patio all the way across one day. So I've been told to leave an inch here for the paving and then at least another inch for a little bit of a mortar or whatever it is underneath that it sits on which means I'm gonna to have to try and get rid of some of this somehow if I want to do that but I just think it's a good idea because if you ever want to finish the whole patio across and you've got a big concrete block in the way then obviously you're not gonna be able to do that but 
yeah, food for thought that one. Anyway, on to the next bit. So concrete's gone off, so I'm just going to build the wall today. Uh, just putting this wall starter on, so obviously to cut it down to the right sort of length, make sure that your uh, tabs are on your mortar lines before you mark up your holes. Difficult to mark mark on the wall with a pencil to make sure you just have to try and get a bit of a mark on the wall, make a little hole in it so you know where you are. So I've drilled three holes here, put the raw plugs in. So you get your raw plugs and your screws and washers or whatever. But the washers are for when you use, have to use a bigger hole as opposed to a smaller hole, so I'll put a washer on it anyway. Obviously we'll get that fixed on now and uh, start building a wall. So they're not screws, they're actual bolts. So what I'm going to do is just get a fitting, socket, and I can just put the fitting straight in the end of my drill. Just to make it a little bit quicker. That should obviously fly them in a little bit quicker. So that's the plan. So I'm just setting up the wall and putting a string line in so key the comments for down below from all the professionals telling me that I'm doing it way wrong it's probably because I've not got the tools but I'm assuming you use some sort of right angle sort of set square thing against the wall or something I don't know but I basically screwed into the wall there made sure it's sort of lined up with the edge of the wall perfectly I've used a big long plank of wood along the wall to try and line it up obviously eyeballed it a little bit as well screw in the bottom there basically all pretty much lines up with that wall and I've got a line along the wall along the floor which is going to disappear when I start slapping it on anyway but at least I've got a, got a guideline there and obviously I can put my spirit level vertical and just make sure my walls my walls straight up the side and then also put a spirit level across that way as well and obviously this way just to check it all the way a couple of spirit levels going so so I decided the wise thing to do was to plan out the wall and actually cut the blocks down to size and everything and then I can put them aside then so I know I need three half blocks there, three half blocks there. These are like, I've got much taken off them basically. So I've got one, two, three there and another three small ones there and another three half blocks for the end there. So I know I've got them all cut to size so once I've got the mortar mixed I can just start laying so i'm just going to bring the rest of the bricks through from the front where they got delivered and get them close by and then have some have a quick bite to eat a quick sandwich or something and then uh, hopefully get laying it that's the plan not got a mixer so i mixed up my own three parts sand one part cement give or take i'm just getting that consistency with it might be a little bit runny but it's not too bad and pasty. That should do the trick. So start laying these bricks. What I've, done, what I've done is I've chipped off a channel like this. I'm going to flip these bricks upside down so when they sit on the floor here I've got a gap at the bottom for a drainage for the water and then I'm going to get some of this stone that I've sort of mashed up after chipping it and obviously got some MOT at the front as well just to make sure I pack it behind those channels there on the, underneath of both bricks there. So I'll flip them over obviously the other way around get that first course down so anything where I need to create a channel I've just chipped away a little bit at the bottom don't need to do that on either, on either course it's just on the bottom one so yeah let's uh, start laying some bricks four courses here I'm mixing up my mortar a little bit less because I'm just doing it in a wheelbarrow I've not got a mixer so I'm having to do quite a few mixes but getting there all right just making sure that I'm putting these tabs in so every two courses these 
these need to come down and that sits in the middle of your brick so I'm going to put the next brick on top of there that'll sit on top of that so making sure that you're doing that and you're packing mortar down the end of the bricks as well so I can fill up all the perks now I've just left the bottom ones open if you can see that but there's some big gaps down underneath I actually put pieces of card on top of the perks just to stop mortar falling down into them when I did the second course so I won't do any harm having those pieces of card in there I'll just get a knife and trim them off if I need to yeah checking the levels and all that so getting there fourth course of six so let's keep going <laughs> So the wall's set, solid, so what I've done is I've left a gap right down to the bottom for drainage, got some stone from the front, I'll just basically put a little bit of stone in, get to like the bottom two courses really, just to make sure that no soil clogs up all those drainage holes, so I'll just compact that down a little bit, just through my feet, and then next task is to try and level this out, and I've got to get this about 12 inches below the top of that patio level so 11 to 12 inches below resting this plank on the top of the patio and then this brick is exactly luckily exactly the difference in the height between the top of the patio and the top of this retaining wall I've built so that gives me my level the concrete I'm going to pour up to the top of the top of the block here the six inches of concrete I'm guessing no expert, but I'm guessing if I, put, if I get it up to five inches and then get a whack of play on it, if I take that down to six inches all over. So that lines up at about eight inches on there, the bottom of the wood. So basically that's how I'm going to get the level all the way up. I'm going to measure all the way up here. 
make sure that I've got eight inches. You can see I've got seven there, so I need to drag some of this down to this left hand side. So just make sure I've got the same amount all the way down. I'll stick a spray level on that, and there should be a little bit of a fall on that as well. I hope. I'm going to pour the concrete, I will have to just tamper it and make sure there's a little bit of a fall on it. And then when the rain comes on it, it's going to drain down towards that end. That's the plan. So I'm going to try and get all that to be 8 inches below the bottom of the timber. Obviously just move the timber along and I'll we'll get another piece of timber and just check it and make sure it's pretty much 8 inches. And then when it's whackered down it should be 9 inches. And then I can get 6 inches of concrete on it then. This is my area that I'm going to pour the concrete into. So, this stone is about an inch higher than what it needs to be because I'm going to whacker it, whacker plate it tomorrow. So, I'll drop it down a little bit more. The concrete's going to get poured to the top of the timbers, which is the top of the wall. I've done that into the wall there. There's a big concrete slab that went underneath there, there's no point in moving that really, I'm going to pour concrete over it, it'll be fine. The concrete will just go straight up to the edge, you don't need any timbers there. I'll just put these blocks in just to hold the boards in place. But this bit's going to be paved, I've got some more paving. So I'm going to extend the paving here and then also exactly the same width going to get extended here but I'm just going to do that over the concrete. I'm done doing the concrete wider just so if I need to put a summer house in which commonly come in 8 by 12 sizes I'll have a concrete base ready for that. The playhouse isn't 8 by 12 but I'll have a base ready for an 8 by 12 summer house four or five years down the line whatever so just a little bit of forward thinking really but yeah that's where I'm up to. Get it whackered, get it flat and then uh, Get a barrow mix in and uh, get the concrete in. See you later, guys. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually removing the uh, 6x2 boards from the side just to help with the drainage because they might have been sitting a couple of mils slightly higher up and the water's actually pooling a little bit in this back corner here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some holes but I'll show you that in a second so I've just obviously removed it's a bit sunny so sorry about the shade the shadows but I've obviously removed these two pieces of wood you can use them for something else so yeah the next part is to drill a couple of holes here and then I'll show you after I've drilled the holes by spraying a bit of water on now it's just pulling a tiny bit in that corner which is the reason why I've, I'm going to drill some holes there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that but I've just filled water what? in this corner it's basically a daddy long legs with wings no, it's not it's a daddy like long legs with wings that's just and my it's, it's kids talking like about daddy long legs with wings so the water's basically draining now through those two wood poles that I've done at an angle so they're coming out the side of the wall there so the water will be draining into the stone so if it is pulling a tiny little bit there which is only a tiny bit that'll just help to stop it so this is the playhouse all in parts, We've got a massive big base and then 
underneath that base I've got the side panels and everything so I've tried to stack it the right way around with the small bits here as well so yeah I'm going to get this on a time lapse and uh, let's get it all in position that's where it's going to live <laughs> 